Oh, good morning, my hearties, dinky do, and welcome to Scotty McClure's Random Pop-Up, live on Facebook. Great to have you with us, of course, Friday morning, nothing gets past me, and uh, I hope that you'll all come and join me, and we can get some chit-chats a little while since I've popped up live on Facebook just for you to say dinky do, Scotty McClure, the first lord of the internet, and uh, of course the uh, world's top broadcaster, and the world's most humble man, you can't beat that, I say... Finley is Finley joining us, and William has joined us. Welcome, 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 I say. Lovely to have you with us, and a very good morning to you. And dinky-doo, Scotty McClue, here just for you to say hi and uh, to have a catch-up with what you've all been up to since we were all last chatting together. Morning from Drum the Drocket, Scotty, says the wonderful Blair Mackay. Good morning, Blair, and uh, lovely to have you with us. Welcome, welcome, Drum the Drocket, I say. A very, very fine part of the world. Morsi Puffins watching. Kareem Sakaraya has joined us. Lovely to have you with us. William Winsborough. Welcome, William. And uh, hello, Scotty. Nice to see you back on Facebook Live. Kareem Sakaraya, I thank you. I've missed you all, but um, I did need to have a wee break. I think that's very important. And, of course, there are lots of exciting things to tell you because we're also uh, live on YouTube at night, podcasting uh, between 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. Good day, Scotty. Good day, Morsi. Lovely to have you with us, Morsi. Now, the hat. Do you want the hat, Morsi? Yes. Uh, there we go. We'll just do a quick, quick swap. I think Morsi needs to get the hat. <laughs> Good day, Cobber. Great to have you with us, and welcome from Oz. So there you are. Uh, Scotty McClure's got his Australian hat on, just to say hi to everybody from Australia. <laughs> Fantastic. So there we go. Right, I'll change, I'll change hats. We'll put the bonnet back. <laughs> There we go. Now, uh, remember to share. Tell Ted, tell Ted, tell Ted that we are here. Wonderful stuff. I'll just do a little bit of sharing. Let everybody know. Uh, so, good day. Dinky do, Scotty, says William. Dinky do, William. Morning, Scotty. Dinky do, says the wonderful Robert Rovers. Excellent, Robert. Welcome, 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 I say, to Scotty McClue Live live on Facebook Live. Wonderful stuff. Sean Gowdy, Dinky Do, Simon Davis. Lovely to have you with us. Morsi's laughing there. Thanks, Morsi. Did you like my Australian? <laughs> fair dinkum, I say. And fair dinky do. Wonderful stuff. There we are. We need the hat. I think if you're taking the trouble to come on here from Australia, I think I can take the trouble to pop on my Australian hat, my jackaroo. So there you are. Tell me, Morsi, would I pop my jackaroo on if I was looking for shearing work? Yes, if I was out in the farm. So there you are. And uh, Zandra Graham, dinky do, welcome, welcome. Love the bonnet. Oh, we like the bonnet, Morsi. Good morning, Scotty. Hope you're all good. All good, Sean Gowdy. Lovely to have you with us. I'm just going to do a little bit of shearing, guys, just to let everybody know that we are live. I think that's quite important. And... Um, then we can see, I'll just let them know that we're doing a random pop-up um, on Facebook, as if they didn't know, mind you. It's not exactly rocket science, is it? So there we are, just let them know. How you celebrate phase one of easing lockdown? Um, elite for six. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Eating for six now. <laughs> Wonderful. Just doing a bit of sharing here, guys. You can all do the same. Let everybody know what is what. Scotty McClue, live on Facebook Live, just for you, Dinky Do. Moss is sending me a big love and a big heart. Bless you, darling. Thanks very much, Dinky Do. Uh, so celebrating. How are we all celebrating uh, phase one? The wonderful James Bowers watching. Out in East Kilbride, James says, Hello, sir. Hope you and your family are well. They are indeed, James, and I hope you 
are well and you're dealing well with the lockdown. Wonderful Gordon Roddy, good morning. Scotty says, Gordon, Gordon, I've replied to you on Messenger. Thank you for your lovely messages. Uh, you must forgive me if I don't see sometimes the messages because I don't have Messenger on here. And of course, everybody automatically sends me a wee message, but I don't get them because I feel it interrupts the live stream sometimes. You know, it goes ping, 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 ping. Everybody wants to have a chat. And uh, that would be a good thing. Can we still come on in Vision and Facebook? We love the bonnet, says Morsi. I thank you, Morsi, out in Australia there. So wonderful to have Gordon with us, of course. Um, <clears throat> you could walk straight into Home and Away, Scotty. <laughs> home and Away. So there we are. Absolutely. Aha! Morning, sir. Paul Francis Carroll. Good morning. And we have Paul Francis Carroll. Just for you, the pipe organ. Now then, we can get your tune on the pipe organ. Um, so there we are. Shall I give you a wee number of the pipe organ? Just to welcome. Uh, so what have we got? Um, right. <laughs> Welcome, Scotty McClue's welcome to Paul Francis Carroll, the world's top organist. Thank you, dear. Morning, Scotty. Nice beard. Thanks, Jack Arthur. Do you like it? I'd forgotten that some of you wouldn't have seen it on here. Uh, so there we go. Jack Arthur there. Uh, Tam Peden's watching. Hello, Tam. Lovely to have you with us. Adam Spibby Higson, Dinky Doo. And uh, uh, Tam's getting everybody else up. John Marshall. Still working, Scotty, at a well known corporation to you and I. Good for you, James Bauer. Top man. Tam Peden's getting everybody up here. Fantastic. Paul Francis Carroll. Jeremiah Clark, yes, is that his trumpet voluntary, if I remember, Paul Francis Carroll, fantastic on the trumpet, that one. Uh, the Australian hat suits you, says the wonderful Sean Gowdy. Scotty McClure, there'll be a spike shortly down south because they've been very relaxed with Corona. Karim Zachariah, this is what I feel. Because you cannot see the enemy, the virus is the enemy. You can't see it. So people then start going, I'm not staying in the house. I'm going out. Uh, what? I'm not staying in. I'm going out because we've been told we can. All that sort of stuff. Now, that's the danger. That's the big danger. And I feel that the Scottish government have been very cautious and looked after us. And to the Scottish government, regardless of anybody's politics, we thank you. Excellent. So there you are. Uh, fantastic. Paul Francis Carl, was that all right? She was growling a bit at the end down the bottom, was a bit heavy at the bottom end there. Gavin Morris has joined us, dinky do. Morsi is giving us a round of applause. Thank you, Morsi. And a round of applause to you. Everybody, a round of silent applause. Fantastic. Wonderful stuff. Um, long time no speak, Scotty. Finlay, far too long. Do not leave it so long next time. Wonderful. Welcome back, Scotty, from Longshanks Leonard. Dinky doo. I say, give us all some hearts, guys. Wonderful stuff. That's what it's all about. And uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Just been doing a bit of sharing here. Um, so I'll share 
to this. Oh, no, I don't want to start a watch party, thank you. I do not want to start a watch party. Stop. <laughs> That's funny, they're, they're getting us to do this. We've got one going. We don't need one. So where am I posting? Posting to friends. Cheer. Sure. Lovely. Right, that's better. Um, Share in a group. No, it's getting me to start a watch party. No, we're not having that. Sorry. There we are. Wonderful stuff. Right. Uh, welcome back, Scotty. Good to see you back on Facebook, says Aaron. Finley says, let's get some sharing done, guys. Share, share, share. Big style. Scottish government have been fantastic during the virus and our fantastic NHS staff. We all appreciated it. Absolutely. And we clapped and clapped for carers last night. Wonderful to have you with us, guys. Thank you, Doo. Uh, for the love of God, will you just share, says Longshanks. Absolutely. Come on, let's get these figures up, guys. Let's get this up to 100. That sort of idea. Welcome back, Scotty. Loving the beard, good sir. Ah, Sean, lovely to have you with us. Fantastic. And we agreed it's Sean Smythe. Have I got that correct? You let me know, Sean. Very, very important. You get back to McClure and you tell me straight. Fantastic. Thank you for all your hearts and your thumbs up. Can we get a, a walk in the light on the organ this morning? Oh, a walk in the light. You know your stuff, Longshanks Leonard. I'm feeling the Facebook live for McClure. YouTube's full of numpties. Tam, it is, but that will change. You know, you've got to have the faith. I've got to get you, Tam, to just make that extra wee leap of faith. Yeah? Remember that we don't, this does not apply to you, but there is a famous old Scottish saying, and it is, bairns and idiots should never see a job half done. Now, bearing in mind, we only started on YouTube on Tuesday. Tuesday night with new podcasts, a brand new series. So they don't know what it's all about yet, but they'll get used to it. There's no idiots in this broadcast. Finlay Morris, you are 100% correct. Absolutely. Uh, you have indeed, Mr. McClure. Yes, Sean Smythe, a wonderful name. There we are. That's what we like. Do you remember we used to say, somebody's name, and they'll go, oh, there's a name to conjure with. I wonder what that actually meant. I could never work out what that meant. Hang on a second, guys. Comfort break. <laughs> We're needing a comfort break. Oh, the heat. The heat. The heat in this studio this morning, really, it's like a greenhouse. Don't be surprised. If I put on another three feet, uh, so there we are. You have indeed fantastic stuff. Uh, you were time, time, time to timing out a lot last night uh, for uh, for ignorant. Oh yes, the ignorant ones. We had to put them in time out. Damn, these are just silly people. They they don't quite understand how it all works, and they're used to coming on to social media and uh, negativizing. And, uh, you know, giving out uh, not good vibes and all that sort of stuff. Whereas they don't realize that McClure is a force for good. You know, good will always triumph over evil. I've only met one bad man, the man that relieved me of my life savings. So there we are. Only bad person I've met in uh, in 60 years. Is that not amazing? Decided to shave the heat for a few weeks ago. I'm totally bald. I don't think I'll go back to growing the hair. <laughs> well, it's interesting. I've got quite a lot of friends. And I said to them, I said, do you shave your heat? They went, aye. They're completely kojacked, you know. Uh, so it's interesting. Well, I'm saying kojack, but maybe people won't remember kojack. What's for breakfast today, Scotty? Um, I think we're um, two lightly boiled eggs. Two lightly boiled eggs, Finlay. A little bit over the top, and we're off the butter at the moment, but I do miss it a bit, uh, especially with a lightly boiled egg on toast. <laughs> Stop. Um, Scotty, I'll stick with Facebook Live. I prefer that. Absolutely, Kareem, but don't give up, you see, because you coming on to YouTube is going to do nothing except improve it, you know? 
So, you remember, we've only started and people are making big decisions. Oh, all right, that's no for me. We've only started, right? I mean, when do you go out when somebody's maybe rebuilding something and you go, oh, no, it looks terrible. Is that? You see, they have, they've only started it. They've only laid the foundation, you see. So you must keep the faith, absolutely. Uh, we're two, I think, because we've come from where they perfected television and radio, um, we expect too much of our social media. And I think let's just see where it goes, you know. No prestigiation needed with my name, says Frankie McGuinness. Frankie McGuinness, not at all. Are you growing your beard, says Sean Gowdy. No, Sean, I'm not being rude, but it's growing itself. So we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, Stevie McKenzie's watching. Stephen Dinkyder. Tam thanking for letting me know. Scotty Boy was live. Says the wonderful Nicky McHugh. Welcome, Nicky. You should dress up as Claude Greengrass for Halloween. Tam, Halloween's the one night of the year McClue does not need to dress up. I can tell you. So there we are. How are you doing, Scotty? Good. We've got, uh, I've got everybody on here. This is fantastic, guys. You're all on. Um, just a huge collection of people. Uh, that's wonderful. Right. Uh, we'll do a bit more sharing. Get everybody get sharing. Who loves you, baby? Morsi Puffin. That was cool, Jack. Who loves you, baby? Uh, Terry Savalas. Fabulous actor. Dirty Dozen, remember him in the Dirty Dozen. Uh, Ross Guthrie is watching. Loved Kojak, says Morsi. I know. What um, television programs are you missing? And what ones have you seen come back? Uh, James Barr is telling us about his breakfast. Are we ready? A wee bit of muesli with raspberries and raisins. Semi-skimmed milk. Is that the green top? Uh, and a lovely wee coffee for breakfast. What's the milk that's just uh, skiddly water, really? Is is it the green or the red? The red, is it, is it the red? I like the blue. Uh, John Jones, thank you, dear. Alex Robertson, one of our finest actors, is watching us. Good morning, Alex. And thank you, dear. A bit early for you to be in the green room. Scotty McClure, I'll give your YouTube a try tonight when you're on, give you support. Do Kareem, because it's only going to improve by you coming on. You know, uh, you know you're going to get the dafties unless we get the brighties. The brighties are all on here, and uh, I'm just saying let's try the new platform, see where it goes, you know. And uh, even, what was it, uh, you know, if one or two are gathered together, as Jesus used to say, you know. Hi, Scotty, having a wee sit down with the dog in Springburn Park. Lovely day. John Jones, you enjoy a wee sit down with the dog, and the dog will be thoroughly enjoying it as well. Did you see that wonderful one I'd posted from a TikTok? And it was the Labrador, and it's a stock one, I think, but he's going, the squirrel will be back tomorrow. It mocks me. I'm now good to go and groom for four hours. <laughs> Sorry about that. Because if you ever see a wee dog in the park, they chase the wee squirrels thinking they can get up a tree, you know. The squirrels are up about 100 feet. Morning, Scotty, says the wonderful James Hasty. Good morning, James. Lovely to have you with us. And I hope you are strong and well. And I send strength to you. Well done for coping with a very difficult time for you. Tremendous. Never easy. And there's nothing anybody can really say except strength. And uh, and that's what it's all about. James Bauer uh, is uh, saying red. Uh, so wonderful. Red. What was red? Tell us more. Uh, Craig Gallagher is watching. Morning, Craig. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo. Uh, good morning, Scotty. Says Alex Robertson. Now, Alex... You're an actor, so you should be going, Oh, Molly Scotty, what earth kind of time is this to be up? You know? <laughs> Seeing what's in the makeup box, you know, that sort of nonsense. Uh, you're having a tipple in the sun this weekend, Scotty. Tam, I don't bother with the booze now. Um, I gave it up on Christmas Day about 
four years ago. Um, well, just before before Christmas Day, I gave up on uh, Christmas Eve, um, or was it the 23rd? I can't remember, because I thought I've got a lot of driving to do, and I was trying to work out. At that point, they just brought in, is it absolutely zero tolerance now? Uh, you can't have anything and go near a car. And they just brought it in, and I thought, no, it's difficult to calculate, and we don't want that, because obviously you then become a crim. You know, we don't want that. Uh, so there we are. So I just gave the booze up. Uh, and then, because I'm driving around a lot, two, three in the morning if I'm working late. And, uh, you know, if the polis go, all right, big man in here, you know, you're bound to have had a refreshment uh, driving a, around here at half two in the morning, you know, and you say, you know, when did you have your last drink? You know, you say, hey, about four years ago, officer, so it should have passed through by now. Uh, you know, I had one one night actually was giving me, um, oh, I can't smell drink curfew. And I said, well, that's because I haven't had any drink to smell. You know, that sort of idea. Uh, enjoy a stroll through the majestic Castle Milk Park this morning. Long shanks, I know it well. Just at the end of Castle Milk Drive, am I correct? Before the road goes down the, the brae to the roundabout, and uh, you can get yourself into the left there and up through the Castle Milk Park. Am I right? You tell me. So there we are. Top of Castle Milk Drive. I think the buses stop there. Red. Oh, sorry, James. Of course, we'd forgotten. I wonder what you're saying red for. Uh, I thought, I don't think James is a red. Um, red is, uh, do you remember red's under the bed? Uh, red, the semi-skimmed milk. Is that the very, very thin one? Uh, so there we are. You sort of put a wee splash in your tea and you think, maybe put a wee teat more in. Um, I tend to find I'm a better driver. <laughs> long, long shanks, don't go there. Uh, not funny. Uh, I know you're only teasing. Uh, red's full skimmed. Yes, so it's very thin, James. Green uh, is semi-skimmed and blue is the full cream. I quite like the blue. And I even went one over that and bought, I'd saved up some pennies and I bought gold. It's about a quid, but um, I splashed out and that's on the old wheat bangs in the morning is something to behold with the banana and maybe even just a drizzle of squeezy honey. Stop! Uh, fantastic. One of the Mark Kells is watching. Thank you, do, Mark. You're 100% correct, Scotty. Is that right, Longshanks? How's that? Somebody was talking to me one night, and uh, I said, uh, they said, you're a very famous man, Scotty. I says, yes, but I don't know why. And he said, because your show, there's nothing else like it. And one of the things we used to love on the radio was when somebody would phone up and say, I'm phoning from such and such a place, you would say, are you, are you in the flats? Or are you in the masonettes? Or are you at the end of the road? And, you know, are you near the, the, the dog and duck? That sort of chat, you know. Uh, I like red milk in my coffee. Nowadays, you don't have the dog and duck for a pub, do you? You have the, the ferret and laptop. Uh, I cycled to Queen's Park yesterday. It's a lovely park. Beautiful Sean Gowdy. The view from the top of the hill, absolutely outstanding. So there you are. Beautiful, beautiful. Glasgow, a fifth. I think, am I right in saying this? Glasgow has the most parks of any city in the world. The most parkland. And a fifth of the area of Glasgow is parkland. Is that right? There we are. Have you ever frequented uh, the Flying Duck in Glasgow. Tam, I don't frequent the public houses now. I used to, used to love all that. I'll tell you what was popular on a Saturday night, down the Trong Gate, and I walk along there, uh, and a wee crawl. And uh, the other one was uh, Partick, you know, along the Dumbarton Road, a wee crawl there. And in those days, the pubs were incredible. You just walked in the door, and everybody looked at you to see if they knew you, to see who had come into the pub. And uh, sometimes there was a kind of slight clandestine element to drinking in Scotland. And uh, I can remember going into a pub to ask directions. 
and it went quiet. The whole pub went quiet when I walked in. It just went, you know. And I remember being down the south of Ireland when I lived in Manchester and I travelled over to Liverpool and got the cat over to Dunleary and uh, into Dublin, stayed in Dublin and then down the south, right down to uh, Killarney, the Ring of Kerry, um, right down the very, very bottom. Fantastic. When it's just yourself and the beach, the beach you put anything else in the world to shame. Beautiful. Anyway, I'm right down there. They'll probably be annoyed at me now because I've just opened up tourism for the very south of Ireland. Right down at the very, what was the, what was the place called I went to? And I said, am I quite close to the birth of all the action a hundred years ago? He said, you're pretty close. <laughs> but it was fantastic. Um, so there we are. So a wonderful, wonderful time down there. And uh, just interesting. But I can remember being in the bar one night. And this lovely chap came over. He was the absolute double of Tom Cruise. Uh, and he was the waiter. And he said, um, how are you? And um, where are you from? Uh, and I said, I'm from Manchester. And he went, he looked at me like this. He goes, that's not a Manchester accent. And I said, no, you're quite right. I said, it's a Glasgow accent. And he said, Ah, welcome, welcome. So that was that. There you go. Uh, morning, Scotty. Beautiful day, says Mark Kelsey. Fantastic, Mark. There's the wonderful Johnny Garvey. Johnny, I told a story the other night, and uh, you'll know which story I told. You featured, although I didn't mention you by name. Have you ever frequented? Oh, yes, no, Tam. No, no, I haven't frequented. Uh, are you a musician, Tam? Do you frequent the public houses? Morning, Scotty, my friend. Hope you're well. Feel strange. So there we are. Never feel strange, uh, Johnny. Not at all. That is, that is my name. Dear Green Place, says Mark Kelsey. Absolutely. Sir Mark Kelsey. I think a knighthood would go well with you, Mark. Sir Mark Kelsey. Uh, we're lucky to have a lot of nice parks, says Sean. We're very lucky, Sean. Absolutely. We have a wonderful city in Glasgow. Posted some lovely photos taken around 5 a.m. yesterday across from the SEC. The Clyde was like a sheet of glass. The reflection was breathtaking. I'll message them. Oh, say, message them to me. Thank you, James Bauer. We love all these things. Guys, if you've just joined me, a very good morning. Don't forget, I now podcast on YouTube between 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock weeknights. So I'm going on tonight for number four. Uh, Michael Farker got barred. Uh, so there we are. No, Tam, you can't say that. I know it's a joke, but you can't say that sort of thing. It's not very nice putting that up. You're an awful man. You're a great man, Tam, but you need... A bit of careful work. Uh, Leaven Grove Park in Dumbarton is the most beautiful park in Scotland. And it's in the finest setting. Peter Connolly, I have trouble arguing with you there. Uh, you used to walk along. I was to have gone to a school called Keel School. Do you know anything about Keel School? It was the Denny's old house. So there we are. Uh, but I didn't, I stayed where I was because I was getting such a superb education. Gordon Sterling, nice to see you, McClue. And to hear from you, Gordon Sterling, you mechanical genius. Are you a mechanical genius or are you just a great enthusiast like myself? Oh, I'm at the Earl Grey, guys. Right, can everybody share, and I mean everybody, right? I mean everybody. So there we are, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm a musician, yes, I don't think you've frequented the type of bars I play in and the genre of music. Uh, Tam, perhaps not, but there's a little luxury I have denied myself up till now. Uh, have you ever heard of... Um, I wish they had old Ireland over here. 
I mean, I can't play music on here because of the copyright, which is a shame, because we could have a wee, a wee jocking show going. Uh, Edinburgh has more green space than Glasgow. Well, of course, what have you got in Edinburgh? You've got Arthur's Seat. Have you ever been up Arthur's Seat? And um, you have the Royal Parks. They're very big. Uh, you have, uh, what else do you have? You have the beautiful crags there. Uh, what do you call the crags in Edinburgh, you could tell me? Come on, Rab. Uh, Nikki Graham's watching. Good morning, Nikki. Dinky Doo, welcome. Scotty McClue, random pop up just for you to say Dinky Doo. Uh, nope, I was wrong. You're right, Scotty. Uh, am I right, Rab? So there we go. Well, there we go. What about about the Parkland? Um, Gordon R has just joined us. Can you talk some sense into the UK government? I wager you might. Dave Cook, I have been asked, if I had a pound for every time I have been asked uh, to become a member of parliament in Westminster, I would be a very wealthy man. And um, I think my problem would be I'd probably go, because I'm apolitical, I'd probably go down as an independent. And uh, my problem would be that when I arrived there, they would say to me, now, here's how the place works, Scotty. You shut up. You keep your mouth shut. You don't criticise the government, uh, you know, unless you're in the opposition, blah, blah, blah. I think there'd be all these restrictions, you know, the speaker shouting, um, Scotty McClure, uh, no, no, enough of that. No, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you. I'll ask you to leave the chamber, Scotty McClure. You know, and all that. I'll, I'll name you. <laughs> I'll name you, Scotty McClure. <laughs> that's all stuff. So that's that's all thing. But yes, of course, I can talk sense into a government, whether they will listen or not to my wisdom. You know. A beautiful folk song, Scotty. My gran loved it. Now, I used to play that on the radio a lot. Uh, the Barn Bracks. And it was very popular. And uh, I used to play a lot of random stuff on the radio. And sometimes I might have bought a CD in Woolworths with my own money, uh, you know, for, for a few pennies. And uh, people would badger me afterwards. There was always people outside the radio station just a small handful of what we called anoraks, maybe looking for an autograph, for a wee chat, can I get a picture with you, all that sort of stuff. Very interesting. We tended not to encourage it, but you got that. One night with a guy outside the window with a radio listening to me and looking in. <laughs> you know, uh, very, very strange. The Meadows, you've got the Meadows, but no, Salisbury Crags. Is that right? That's what I was thinking of. The Salisbury Crags and the Meadows as well, of course. Absolutely. Uh, Scotty, have you ever violated the Geneva Convention? Not to my knowledge, Finlay. I've never violated anything to my knowledge. So there you are. So uh, from that point of view, no. Uh, I certainly have not. And, uh, of course, the Geneva Convention still on the go, Yes. Uh, Inverleith Park. Oh, now you're talking down at Inverleith, Robert. I know it very well. Uh, boating pond. Yes. I had a friend staying in one of these big, big hooses. And uh, these Edinburgh houses are just massive sitting in there trying to wonder how you're going to pay the heating bill, you know. Uh, Unbar Michael Scotty says Thomas. Well, I don't know if he's Bart Thomas. And why would I have barred him? Hi, Scotty, says the wonderful Gordon R. Good morning, Gordon. Guys, can everybody share? I want to see the wee number in the corner go up to 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. You're not sharing. Do us a favor and share. There's not a lot to ask. Uh, David Diston, Dinky Do, Jim Higgins has joined us. The wonderful Chris McCarran. Scotty, mind and let me know when you're on the telly advertising fish fingers. 
Captain Birdseye indeed. Do you know, actually, Chris, so you and I are septic. It's funny because uh, I looked in the mirror the other day and I thought, remember Captain Birdseye? I thought, is there still work for an old actor like me? And I thought, yes, Captain Birdseye. Get the fish fingers on the go. Fantastic. Wonderful. Great stuff. And remember, what a great advert that we all remember that for the captain. Happy with Mr. McClure, says Dave Cook. Absolutely, Dave. Johnny Garvey, Scotty, I think you'd be great as a speaker in the House of Commons. However, I think you'd also be able to keep them all under control with your wet and fusy, as I'm great. <laughs> I think the predictive text taking over, Johnny, with your wit and something, something. Great after the speaker and the Commons. Seriously, I think you'd keep them all in order. Yes. Order, order. We must have order. The Prime Minister. The Prime Minister will be heard. Fantastic. We don't have that in the Scottish Parliament, though, I think. The presiding officers are very, very good and terrific manners. You know, I can remember when the Scottish contingent, the SNP, was just so huge. And when the Scottish contingent arrived, um, they were used to applauding in the Scottish Parliament. And um, it was, I think it was John Berkow who was speaking at the time. He said, uh, we don't we don't applaud to our Scottish members. We don't applaud. And then they did applaud. Can't remember what it was, but they were all applauding. So I think we probably, Scotland can always teach the world something good. You know, I think I can see that. Remember that one. Scotty McClue says, Scotland can always teach the world something good. Okay, so there we are. Uh, Scotty, yes, a speaker in the House of Commons. So there we are. Um, I did, um, when I ask the member to speak, I expect him to do that with an element of alacrity. Can you imagine? McClure is the speaker. Going on the podcast, Scotty. Got a new rhyme. I'll keep it to then. Peter Conley, do. Guys, for those of you who don't know, Scotty McClure is podcasting for two hours between 8 and 10 on uh, YouTube Live. All right. So get on to Scotty McClure's YouTube channel and subscribe. Scotty, what's with the beard, buddy? Um, just stop shaving, buddy, for about... The third time in my whole life. There we are. And wonderful. I was laughing because I remember when I was at my aunt's funeral, I had a big beard. And I was talking to my sister on the phone. Family members do this, don't they? They said, oh, nobody liked your beard. Nobody. You know, the whole world did not like my beard. <laughs> you get that. Parents do it as well, you know. Uh, Mum, I was thinking and going, oh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. No, no. Um, so there we are. What have we got here? Uh, the wonderful Callum McSwan. Uh, good morning, Scotty. Dinky do. It's a beautiful sunny day, a perfect day for a walk down to the Stonehaven Beach. Take my love to the Stonehaven Beach. Uh, I've just followed your Twitter page, Scotty. I'll promote it for you. Callum McSwan, thank you. Everybody, please promote Scotty McClue. And do it. Don't go, ah, no, I'm no bothering with him. It's just a big blow. You know, that stuff. Because I am only the catalyst and I can get stuff out there. You know, I mean, I, I posted on Twitter the other day and I think I looked this morning... 600 people had viewed the video just like that, um, you know, and uh, I posted one the other day and uh, 3,400 viewed it just like that. You know, it's incredible. So, yeah, so please, everybody, uh, you have a duty of care to promote Scotty McClure on social media. There we are. Uh, he offered you a line. And he thinks you banned him, says Thomas Peden. Was it a funny line? So there we are. Uh, by the way, Somerset is one big park, 
and it's on a par with Scotland, in my humble opinion, says the wonderful Dave Cook. <laughs> Aye, Zomerzet, Zomerzet. Remember my dad stopping to ask this Zomerzet farmer? So there we are. And uh, he said to him, he said, uh, we're down one of these country lanes in the summer. And it was just gorgeous, just acres and thousands of acres of beautiful countryside. And my dad stopped up to this old boy, so tanned he was red. You know, it had come back red. And uh, he stops and he said, Aye, excuse me, could you tell me? Aye, right. And my dad said to me, he said, um, do you think they'll still be open? He said, oh, ah, they'll still get a gallon. <laughs> because these old Somerset farmers used to take a flagon of cider with them to the fields and at lunch have a good old, a good old jug, a glug glug. So there we are. So Somerset and Darzit, I, I tell, Darzit, and Cornwall and Devon. Ah, Fiddler Boris is having a laugh. Does McGuigan tune in to this sauce, uh, says Tam. Good man, Tam. So there we are. So, do you remember that? I wish we had old Ireland over here. Uh, fantastic. Good morning, Scotty. Uh, I'm getting my rod out today. Too much information, Edward McAleer, but we hope that you managed to hook something. So there we are. Or are you spinning me, spinning me a line? See what I just did there? Something fishy about that, I'll tell you. Oh, catch up, catch up. <laughs> How's the dog, Scotty McLean, with the heat? Mine are not coping. Uh, Kareem, he's fine. He was doing a bit of pecking last night, but I worked out he's 97 in dog years. But uh, when we're out for a walk, his, his, his back leg's a little bit weak because he had a stroke 10 years ago. Well, it was a fibrocartilaginous embolism, but I just say stroke because otherwise people's eyes glaze over when you're telling them. So it was an FCE, and the wee soul fought his way back. He walks a little bit like the late Douglas Bader, but, um, you know, absolutely wonderful, Sir Douglas. And um, he really is incredible. He's beautiful little, the, the little pink tongue, fresh as a daisy, shiny and glossy and all that, but he's just got to take his time. So he has a, a, a wee seat. So uh, he's, he's fine, Kareem, but thank you for asking. And I send love to your lovely two dogs. Um, my fishing rod, of course, Edward, what else? Um, it's too early. Is it too early for a hot chocolate? Fiddley, I, yes, I posted this the other day. I wouldn't like people to think I was a crank and when I was brought up, a hot chocolate was a kind of treat that you maybe had once or twice a week at night. Uh, it sort of came from the days when people had cocoa. Uh, I've still got some cocoa in the house. A lot of people use cocoa for baking. Hang on. Ah, there we are. Quick comfort break. Uh, a lot of people use cocoa for baking. Um, I know that, so there we go. Uh, but uh, does anybody take a cup of cocoa at night? Does anybody have a malted milk? Uh, uh, you know, I've had friends come round reeking of the stuff. Scotty is trying to break the TikTok market. Can't wait to see him in a breakout dance. I know, Tam, I'll have to practice my moves. I don't want to twist a knee or anything. Some of them are quite complex. The wonderful David Treasurer is watching. What a top man, wonderful broadcaster, and uh, a delightful person. Do you fish, Scotty? Where and when? Edward McAleer. I don't, Edward. It's not really my thing, but I do travel north a lot, and I drive along the side of the Spey, and I see fishermen, and uh, I also um, go to Perthshire a lot, and I see people in the tea. So there we are. I get invited um, to various houses in Scotland. And um, very, very interesting. Enlightened families that don't mind having McClure at the table. Do you know what I mean? All that sort of stuff. Just They're just enlightened. They get fed up with each other. 
and they say, let's have McClure at our table this Saturday night for dinner. Very interesting people. So there you go. Anyway, I, uh, you know, meet a lot of fishing people and uh, shooting people. I don't, I'm a crack shot, but I don't shoot um, because I would only have done it for the pot. So there you are. And my last Labrador, who was an absolute gun dog, became gun shy in older age. And where I lived in Yorkshire, there were shooting parties and the dog just made his way home and he's only just disappeared. I thought, oh, I've lost the dog and I would go home. He's sitting at the door. <sighs> oh, here you are. <laughs> Wally Logan, thank you, do. But no, no, but I know about uh, fly fishing, split cane rods, spinning, uh, netting, uh, from the fact I come from a long line of fishing families and sea fishing families and all that sort of stuff. So I kind of know my stuff, but it's not really my thing. And I don't like the idea of the hook through the poor old fish, although I do like a fish supper. So there we are. But I think they'll have been netted. A few of us on here knew uh, once he'd said, oh, for goodness sake, Tam, would you stop it? Stop mentioning all these names. So there we go. Yes, just Cam Doon. You're a great man. Cam Doon. I wish we had old Ireland over here. I just heard from a daughter who lives in Balloch. She's out for a walk in Balloch Park and said it's mobbed even at this time in the morning. It's going to be a busy weekend, like opening the gates of... The old Denny's and Dumbarton at 5 p.m. Now, I wish I had known Denny's, Peter. Tell us more. Because when I was wee, Dumbarton was boom town. Dumbarton, can I tell you, had several uh, shipbuilding yards. In the early days, I'm talking the 1700s, maybe the 15 and 1600s. And I think Dumbarton had seven yards, would that be right, all along the shore there, uh, running along from Sand Point, um, right probably along towards uh, Keel. And, of course, the Denny's, uh, huge ships in there. Now, was it dredged? Was there more room? Has it been filled in? Do tell us, because uh, everybody in Scotland can benefit from the history of Dumbarton. And the Denny's, of course, I remember um, the Denny's, Sir Morris, and uh, uh, all these wonderful people. And uh, the Denny's Theatre in Dumbarton. And all the Clyde steamers built at Denny's. And the one I worked on, the Wee Ashton, she was built at Denny's, 1938. You're mesmerising, Scotty, says uh, Finlay Morris. Finlay Morris. What a nice thing to say. Scotty, that big jumper's getting you far too warm. I know, but I wanted a wee bit of colour. I was in my white shirt on YouTube last night. You can still see folk heading to the fields with flagons of cider, Scotty. Usually on a Friday night. Rab Rovers, are you down in Somerset? So there, you watching from Somerset. Wonderful. Must be something in those apples, low rates of infection round here. Uh, looking forward to visiting that place just north Helensborough next week. <coughs> Not looking forward to the drive. Always put you on a, a 10. So there we are. Not looking forward to the drive. Always put you on a 10. Put me on a 10. Wonderful JP McCusker's watching one of our top broadcasters in the universe. Good morning, JP. Lovely to have you with us and welcome. Uh, you could not have a bigger fan. Aren't you roasting with the jumper on, Scotty? Yes, Neil, I am, but don't worry. I've got no back to it. It's just a couple of pieces of elastic over the back. This is all just a bib I put on, you see. Uh, so let's get some shading done, guys. I know, yes, the numbers are dropping. I'll need to go in a few minutes anyway, guys. All right, Scotty boy, happy nine in a row. Martin Tierney. Fantastic. Scotty McClay, I look forward to returning to see Loch Lomond. I've missed the place. I love Dumbarton also, says Kareem. Absolutely. And uh, nine in a row, I'm on the hoops, I say. And, of course, um, up the jails as well. Uh, WATP, 
uh, all that sort of stuff. This is my story. This is my song up the jambos. Come on, the high bees. Yes. Talking to the young ones with their carriots, Scotty. Incredible, isn't it? It's all luxury houses now, Scotty, and Dumbarton Football Club. There's a new ground on it. Yes, beautiful big white mansions. I'll tell you how I know them. I've walked along there, and also I've um, looked over from Lang Bank and seen them. There's a lovely restaurant in Lang Bank. And uh, I've had afternoon tea. I got invited for afternoon tea. And um, please don't think there's any side to me, guys. I get invited to these places. Scotty, uh, can I give you directions? Will you join me for afternoon tea? A wee business proposition for you. <laughs> the number of times I've heard that. All the best, Scotty, says the wonderful Neil Hunter. Dinky do, Neil. Lovely to have you with us. Yes, absolutely. And of course... Um, I'm not after dinner speaking at the moment. That's dried up. And uh, we're, of course, not on the telly, not on the radio at the moment. Uh, Scott McClue, don't do the football. No, I don't either, Kareem. So there you are. Mon the Ton, uh, the Morton. Oh, when the Saints. There we are. I'm just uh, doing popular phrases in Scotland. We are the Jaggers. <laughs> that sort of stuff so they are things that you hear in your local pub on occasion I must remember there was a can't remember it was Partick Thistle were playing one night and there was a wee pub in Mary Hill and I'd gone in for a light refreshment uh, I was a bit of a bore I used to sometimes take a little bit of work along with me and have a refreshment and study something if it needed reading Put it back in my pocket. You know, that sort of idea. Uh, hi, Scotty boy. Happy nine in a row, says Martin Tierney. Yes, absolutely. We don't really do the football on here. Uh, Trick Murray said, if I look over from Lang Bank, you'll see Dumbarton Rock. I stood for an hour and it never moved. <laughs> I love it. We all know that joke, Peter, but I love it. You never tire of a Trick Murray joke. Have you spotted that? I'm on the Rovers. Um, Dinky do, Scotty, from a sunny Staffordshire. Mark Hampshire, lovely to have you with us from Staffordshire. Whereabouts are you? Because I used to broadcast on the radio in Stoke. Uh, what we would do is, and I called in one night to do the show. It was lovely. Uh, what happened? I would had to go down to Manchester, and um, I was broadcasting from Scotland to the rest of the country. So all the radio stations had joined up. Anyway, I had to go to Manchester. I phoned my boss in Scotland, and I said, is there anything we can do? I have to be in Manchester on Thursday. Is there anything we can do um, to get the show? Because it's unlikely I'm going to make it back in time for it. It went out at 7 o'clock in those days. Right, the programmer had put it on at seven o'clock because he said that's what they're doing in America. Right, how American is Paisley? So there we go. Uh, I mean, when I was wee, Danoon was like a mini America. Fantastic. And uh, Cranberry near Eccles Hall, says Mark. Beautiful Mark. Gorgeous Staffordshire. We love it. Anyway, uh, he said to me, I'll ring um, the guys at Stoke and see if they can do the program. And I arrived at Signal Radio in Stoke, and the staff could not have been nicer or more welcoming. And they said lovely things. I said, why are you all still working? They said, we've stayed back to meet Scotty McClue. <laughs> and they did the program for me, and I came out, and there I was in Stoke at, uh, uh, you know, Nine ten at night and drove back up to Scotland. Uh, the wonderful Louise Arrell is watching, one of our finest young photographers. Dinky-doo, Louise. Lovely to have you with us. And um, always enjoy hearing how things are getting on. There's a lot of talent uh, around, a lot of young talent. Louise is a fabulous photographer. There we are. Excellent. And uh, she's kindly, she kindly watches Scotty McClure. 
We like that. Thank you. I wonder why they gave people the freedom of the town. So Jackie got the freedom of Dumbarton. So there we are. Um, well, Peter, you don't know um, when he's back in the town. You see, this is the whole thing. We don't always know who's about. It's incredible. Um, you know. I, I have friends, I'm not blowing any trumpets here, but I have friends who host some very, very important people at their house. I know everybody's important, but these are, you know, like massive, massive names, and uh, they host them at their house quite regularly. And sometimes I pop round and uh, they say, um, you know, you'll know Scotty, and oh, yes, of course, yes. Very nice to see you. <laughs> It's a hoot. But to me, as you all well know, people are people. So there we are. Um, you know, I am your original, original Scottish socialist. You know, uh, slightly right of a till of the hun. No, not at all. Not at all. Apolitical. Apolitical. Absolutely. But people are people. You know what I mean? And I can remember... Um, People saying to me, Scotty, could you meet so and so wants to meet you? I say, who's this? Oh, he's the managing director of such and such. And I say, yeah, but is he a nice guy? You know, <laughs> because I'll not be doing anything for his company. You know, it's all that sort of stuff. Big, big managing directors. And when these guys made a decision, you'll love this, folks. It was 15 years before it, it was implemented. Such a great man, Scotty. Love, Sir Jackie, met him a few times, came back to visit Dumbarton Academy in the 70s when I was a pupil. Peter, wonderful. That's just the mark of that wonderful man. So there you go. Tremendous stuff. And, um, of course, racing driver. When I was wee, Jim Clark was the big name. And I can remember when Jim was killed. We were just wee in school. And I can remember a fellow pupil coming in and going, Jim Clark's dead. Oh, there you are. That's how influential and important these guys were. And I can remember a guy in my class in school, and we were to stand up and say what we wanted to do for a career. And in those days, I said, uh, a doctor or a minister or a go on television. And people like, You just got laughed at, you know. So there we are. Never say never. Two phrases I'll leave with you. I can and I will. This is the moment and I am the one. Yes, get these on the go, guys. Get out there and do it. So there we are. Brian Wilson has joined us. Dinky do, Brian. Lovely to have you with us. And welcome, welcome, welcome. It's just about time I was pushing off, folks. I've just seen that. These drivers these days were proper racing drivers. Yes, Sterling Moss, Jim Clark, and, of course, the cars. When you look at the cars, the cars are quite dangerous. I had an old friend who was one of the early racing drivers at Brooklands. He used to race blower Bentleys at Brooklands, and this guy was the genuine article. In later life, he'd lost... His, uh, his his money, unfortunately, but a lovely, lovely man and could tell you superb stories. So you just never know who anybody is. And, um, you know, he used to do a lot of chauffeuring for, uh, for public schools around the home counties, things like that, and, uh, and, and what have you. Terrific guy, but the stories. And he was such a gentleman. And um, he was very friendly with Alec Izigonis, the designer of the Morris Minor and the Mini. So there you are. And he used to tell me at Alex at his house, I think I maybe told you the story. He said Alex was a very, very hard worker, a bit of a workaholic, big smoker as well, all that sort of stuff. And he said, Alex, why don't you come and have a break? Come for Sunday lunch. He went, I don't really have the time, to be honest with you, Reg. And he said, um, no, 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 do, do, come over and join us. He said, bring your work. You can go up to my room and work. So they are here at the big work room. And um, they knew Castlewell, and uh, 
They had a lovely Sunday lunch. Alec Izagonis went up the stairs to work in his drawings, and he came down and Reg said to him, how are you getting on with that new car, Alex? And he said, I'm having a bit of a problem, a bit of a challenge with the power to weight ratio. I've even tried putting the engine sideways in the front. Start of the uh, BMC transverse engines, the Mini and then the 11 and 1300s. Uh, the cars of today in racing are so much safer. That's what made the drivers bet on the old days. The cars were much harder to drive. Yeah, well, as I say, Reg drove this big blower Bentley round the track at Brooklands. And in those days, these big cars could just tip up. Of course, the driver fell out, banged his head 70 miles an hour or whatever. And that was the end of that, you know. Andrew Mackay's watching Dinky Do. And it was the same. If you look at these early racing cars, they've got, you know, they've got the, the, the boat tail, the sort of slipper launch tail. And then they've got a wee bit of protection, but it doesn't go right up to the head. And then they've got these tiny little screens in front, you know. And uh, love the show, says Louise. The Scotty of porridge for breakfast. Our pot keeps getting bigger. Louise, I love my porridge. I'll tell you what I do have. It's not worth anything, but it's a beautiful thing. An old, ancient Scottish porridge bowl from the days when you made a big bowl and you put it on top of the range. And this one's got sort of black smoke marks. It's all blackened. The glazing has blackened from sitting on the range. And then when you let it cool, you probably put a slice of porridge. It would be a little bit wobbly. And you could put it in the drawer in the dresser and cut a slice off in the mornings and eat it. So they are the oatmeal. And there was a holiday, Louise. I know you'll like this. There was a holiday in Glasgow called Meal Monday. And Meal Monday was for the university students to go home for the weekend to get another bag of oatmeal to see them through the winter. So there you are. Wonderful. Great show, Scotty. Look forward to the next one. Bye for now. Bye, Rap. In fact, guys, I'll need to go. Have a lovely day. Take great care of your dear selves. Remember, you are very, very important people. Look after you. Enjoy being you because it's a lovely thing to be. And have a great day. Join me tonight at 8 o'clock sharp on YouTube youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Scotty McClue one and uh, come on and uh, join in the podcast because from little acorns great oaks grow have a wonderful day my darlings and to every single one of you dinky do the goodbye song oh yes goodbye everybody goodbye take care everybody as you go Goodbye, everybody. A vita zaino revoir and a cheery oh, fantastic! I'll play you the goodbye song. I'll play you out on the goodbye song. There we are. Right here we go. <laughs> There you go, guys. Have a great day. Take care, Tarallas. <laughs>